Let's take a look at the charge on the phosphate ion. That's PO4, three minus. So the charge on the phosphate ion is three minus. There's two ways that we can figure that out. One is we can look at compounds that contain the phosphate ion, like sodium phosphate. So we know sodium on the periodic table, that has a one plus ionic charge, and we have three of them. So the whole phosphate ion, the polyatomic ion, it has to be three minus. We have the three minus, three plus, that gives us a net charge of zero. So the phosphate ion, again, three minus. Another example would be calcium phosphate. Here we have two plus as the ionic charge on calcium because it's in group two. Three times two plus, that's six plus. So we'd have to have two times three minus in order to get six minus and balance the charge out. So again, the phosphate ion, the charge is three minus. We could also look at formal charges to find the charge on the phosphate ion. So this is a Lewis structure for the phosphate ion, and we have formal charges written in. Each of the oxygens with a single bond, so there's a single bond, these are all single bonds between the oxygen and the phosphorus, they have a formal charge of minus one. The phosphorus, it has a formal charge of zero, and then this oxygen with the double bond, it has a form of charge of zero as well. So if you add up all the formal charges, negative one, negative one, and negative one, you'll get the ionic charge, this three minus here. So again, the charge on the phosphate ion, three minus. And note that this three minus, it applies to the whole ion. This is a polyatomic ion. We would have resonance with the phosphate ion, which would mean the double bond and the three single bonds, they'd be averaged, but we'd still have that overall ionic charge of three minus for the phosphate ion. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.